Hi everyone. Hi, thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll be starting shortly. Just waiting for our very, very special guest for today. Uh, we have Kohelika Kohli from Kato India joining us and we'll be talking about designing luxury spaces using stone. So thank you all for joining in. We have about a minute to go. So do hang around and uh, we'll be starting shortly. If you have any questions on stone, its usage or anything specific when it comes to luxury spaces, do drop in your questions uh, in the comment box. There is also a, a question mark at the bottom. So feel free to use that. I think our guest is online. So I'm just... Thank you all. I'm just waiting for Kohelika to get connected. Hi, Yami. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very well, thanks. Thank you. Can you hear me well? I, I can, but I, I'm informed that we may have some network issues today because at least where I am, they've been disconnecting the Wi-Fi. So. Oh, okay. Uh, no worries. Uh, even if you do get disconnected, I'll stay online. You can just come back again and we'll wait for you. Sure. Your voice is breaking a little bit. Is it? Uh, I'm going to, you know, I actually have a terrible, I'm recovering from a bad throat. Is this better? Yes. Is this better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to just try and speak louder. Uh, thank you, Kohelika, for being here with us today. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to talk about luxury spaces using stone with you. Uh, you don't need an introduction, but I will still take two minutes to just introduce you to our audience today. Uh, Kohelika Kohli is the co-founder, CEO and creative director of K2 India, established in 2010 with her mother, Sunita Kohli, an award-winning designer. Kohelika graduated as an architect in 2004 from the Pratt Institute of Design, New York, USA, where she studied carpentry and photography as well. She has interned in England with Sir Norman Foster, working on projects in London and in the USA, notably on the Foster extension to the Boston Fine Arts Museum, originally designed by Ian Bay. K2 India is driven by the pursuit of excellence and quality. They strongly believe that one's surroundings directly influence the quality of one's lives, whether in the workplace, at home, or public spaces in between. Their approach is rooted in a firm belief that design is fundamental to improving the quality of life. And with an integrated and unified approach, it can become a total function and living work of art. So with that wonderful ideology, Kohelika, I'm so proud to be speaking to you today uh, about luxury spaces with stone. So your designs are uh, intended to be, you know, they're said to have a sense of timelessness and grandeur, of course, right? And they're eternal. So while you pick up flooring for your projects, uh, what are the characteristics that you will look for, you know, to cater to your style of design? So um, I have to say, I think in general, when we work with stone um, for larger spaces, let's say, I think the sim we will tend to lean towards probably simpler stones, stones with, um, so let, if, we, if we just talk about large flooring spaces, right? Like, yes. Uh, you're doing homes anything upwards of 5,000 square feet one usually leans towards using floorings which um, are quieter less textured um, mm -hmm. and probably more neutral in color because I feel mm -hmm. um, design is a process and you know, when you get on to doing uh, flooring is one of the stone actually whether it is on the floors or on the walls is one of the first steps in that process of design because after that, it's a layering process and so many other things from uh, wall colors, carpets, furniture, decorative lights, all come in to add to that complete vocabulary and that complete story. Um, so I would say we, we tend to lean towards using simpler, quieter stones. Um, and that is perhaps what also sometimes leads to projects having a certain timelessness, uh, which doesn't mean that I don't buy... Um, 
very expensive marbles from you. <laughs> I do, <laughs> but I think there's a place for everything, and every designer has their own approach of how they want to go about it. Um, right. That's just the approach we tend to take. I don't think there's any right or wrong way with it. It also depends on the design sure. aesthetic of, of every designer. So, yeah. So, uh, can you share some examples of stones that you think are sort of, you know, like you said, simpler and uh, more classic? Yeah, I mean, a stone uh, which we have used for a very long time, in fact, uh, and I find it even. In fact, I just redid my my parents' home recently. Um, is a stone called? Uh, it used to be called Burberry beige, and I think it's called something mm -hmm. else uh, mm -hmm. because of reasons I'm saying sure you know. So that's yes. a stone I always find is a classic. You know that top right. tone, um, and it comes from that Burberry jacket, and I'm assuming that's why mm -hmm. it was given the name Burberry beige. Mm -hmm. And that Burberry raincoat, as you know, is a classic. You know, it's yeah. never going to be out of style. So I think yeah. that's one of those stones that will always be in style. um for people who love white i always feel that white makrana will always be in style you know it's not something that will ever go away and of course for those who can afford it white horses will always be in style it's it's a sense it's, it's a sense of timelessness so those are, i think are two stones that i definitely think um set a very nice base to design you know and then you build upon it Okay, uh, that's quite useful. Uh, you know, you've done a wide range of projects, not just homes. Could you? I mean, let's not talk about flooring for a minute. Could you share some examples in of ways in which you have used stone interestingly? Could be so, products, could be accessories, could be whatever. See, firstly, as uh, you know, you know, I uh, am an architect, a designer, and a carpenter. So we tend to yeah. use a lot of stone in our furniture. Uh, yes. as well and that's what i mean by layering you know if you take quite a stone when you start off mm -hmm. what ends up on your furniture can be much more exotic uh um, yeah so a lot of your a class is amazing exotic range we keep using on our various pieces of furniture um and i'm a big one so i i use a lot of uh granite and marble even on walls um i think especially in smaller apartments because um right. living in a small apartment myself i think for people who live in big houses you can always shut part of your house down while you get the other part painted and yeah. unfortunately people who live in small homes like i do in, in a small apartment it's um it's a real headache and i think if uh, the kids and i moved into one room we'd probably kill each other so it's you don't really have that option for uh you know just uh, getting that shutting everything down for 5 days and getting the house painted and so i'm a great believer in using um stones in different finishes uh on walls as cladding um we have and and you know we in fact push our own limit and we even get our vendors like you to push your limits to give us certain stones um where you know whether they are whether they are sandblasted chisel leather creo Uh, to really get out that green um, mm -hmm. and texture in that stone, so that's sure. something we use. We we tend to use a lot of. Um, we've done something really beautiful uh, recently uh, when we were doing wardrobes for somebody in 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 Bangalore. We ended up doing the entire back cladding of the wardrobe in stone. So we have the stone installed, uh, and we only did the verticals. We, we constructed the verticals in the factory out of veneer and, and board, etc. And that also is another way of. I mean, obviously, you have to have an indulgent client who loves his wardrobe uh, to do that, because otherwise, I don't think everyone will be agreeing in spending those sort of monies. Uh, but it's looked really beautiful, you know. So one is always looking at. interesting ways to use it uh, i'm a big believer in horizontal surfaces like bedside tables to always have stone because i think mm -hmm. it makes functional sense and yes. then again for those stones we start looking at exotic stones so that's what i mean by the for me the base stone i try and keep it simple um mm. and build up on using stone as an accessory on the furniture right So, uh, could you share some tips, you know, with our audience on how to play with different stones together and how to blend, let's say, two or three stones uh, when you're designing sort of spaces? 
for public use versus private use. You know, I mean, homes work very differently from spaces that are being used, like let's say malls, restaurants, and you know, which have huge sort of uh, footfall. So, how do you play around with stone and different materials uh, in that context? So, um, you know, and especially if you see the way malls go, right? Especially mm -hmm. in a country like India, um, they. Because as you know, the smaller the slab, the size of stone you buy, the more um, kind of uh, cheaper it is in a way and more accommodating to budgets. Yeah. So the larger slabs, of course, take you up higher into your budgets. Um, and there's a beautiful way, not just of using uh, um, marbles, but mixing marbles with certain granite uh, mm -hmm. as well and working out floor patterns. Um, so that is something that one has really explored in public spaces. Um, mm -hmm. The difficulty only comes when I feel and one has to, you know, people have to be careful because when you start using uh, materials of different textures on the same surface, when you have to polish them at a later date, that becomes a little complicated. So I think one has to be careful about that. Um, other than that, um, I feel you're absolutely right that homes and, you know, public spaces take on a completely different vocabulary of the type of stone you may choose to use. Mm -hmm. um, but like, again, you know, I lean towards using stone, not just on floor surfaces, but also vertically, because I feel in the long run, maintenance is less. Um, mm -hmm. And today, I think that is key, because, you know, you can spend an X amount, an initial investment on stone and buy it. And mm -hmm. but that time you're prepared to spend the money. But when you have to keep the upkeep of that, I think that's what yes. kind of stabs you sometimes because you're not kind of prepared of the number of times you have to upkeep it and also the cost that it is mm -hmm. that entails to keeping it, you know, keeping it shiny and shiny. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, could you share examples here? Uh, you know, stones that work well in public spaces versus stones that work very well in private spaces. You know, I think with the sort of uh, coatings and technologies that you guys are bringing in, uh, I don't think there's a limitation on that now, what works in a private space or a public space. I think it really comes down to budget. Um, and again, in public spaces, you know, uh, all the emperors have worked very well, for example, you know, because the brown, the beige, the grays, I think they always have worked beautifully. Of course, now, as you see, um, um, and of course, we're talking about India right now, right? Yes, because in yes, India, of course. Um, and, and if you talk about a city like Delhi, especially, where yeah. malls have become um, also a place where high-end restaurants are coming up, right? Yeah. So you're going into a restaurant and you, you know, you're you paying 2,500, 2,800, 3,000 rupees a person for a meal. And when you're doing that, you expect a certain lux value to come in, not just when you're walking in, but also at the, at the, at the restaurant. Yeah. Um, and I'm not necessarily saying that lux value comes by spending a lot on the stone. So like I'm saying, an yeah. emperor can look beautifully mixed, whether yeah. it's even mixed with a makrana or a Swiss white, um, depending on how, what sort of things. are very easy stones to use. Again, a neutral in tone, neutral in texture, neutral in, neutral in pattern, so they can mix them and layer them very well. Um, and I have used certain uh, granites mixed with something like, you know, a gray emperor. So I've used like a Kashmiri white with mixed with it because the, it didn't exist a budget to buy a Swiss white or to buy horses, of course. Yeah. It's impossible, yeah, yeah. You know, for... So again, I think it really depends on how, what the pattern is. Um, you will find people do a lot of contrast with white and black or beige and black. Um, I tend not to do that sort of contrast. I'm a more tone on tone build up that I can, the way I design. Uh, but there are all those ways that exist. But I think a major thing becomes and also in the, how large the pattern is, how small the pattern is, is it vertical, is it, you know, cross directional. So those become important elements when you're trying to look for stones and use them. Um, I know you had a, a very nice stone I used some time ago from you guys called, I think you named it Blue Jeans. I found, Think there's something like that which also worked really beautifully you know we just laid it in cross-directional and it worked really really nicely right right thank you that's very useful for our audience as well 
uh, you know, trends keep evolving, right? Whether it's minimal design, bold design, trends keep changing. Uh, you work with your experience in sort of residential spaces. Uh, what are the latest trends today, or what are people looking for? Um, okay, uh, if you talk about trends, um, I think more recently, uh, a lot of the classical design. in flooring um have come back in a big way um you know designs that one would see being done perhaps 20 odd years ago in flooring mm-hmm. but also the sort of patterns that you would probably see you know in the florence cathedral um mm-hmm. and a lot of european palaces and villas uh, you you see a lot of that coming back in on the floorings at least um and people are looking for you know those deep rose pink tones um yeah. i mean now you hardly see it but the makrana used to have a beautiful pink that used to come but now it's almost yes. non existent and it's really not available yeah. but um and you used to see those used in palaces etc yeah. um i think however we are more driven by um what the classical trends were um i'm mm-hmm. talking about it in the late 18th century early 19th century and i think that's come back in a very big way uh, even in small apartments you feel people want to use um i won't say actually i mean they want to use kind of busier patterns at least in their lobbies and yeah. their passages and their walkways um so there's one one is that side of it right so again it all depends on your client because we tend to cater uh to clients who do a lot of colonial work as well colonial mm-hmm. and classical yeah. tend to cater towards that plus we tend to cater to very kind of contemporary work as well and i think in in people who are doing more contemporary homes um in fact recently again we used a, you know concrete marble from you guys and we we we, brought, we used it in different textures on the floor and a different texture on the wall and it's come out beautifully uh, the project will probably finish sometime this year all delayed because of covid and everything but um but then you know that 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 again that um uh, that concrete pattern which has kind of texture in it but is quite quiet in its presentation when it's laid in a large uh, you know on a large flooring is um is quite in you know mm-hmm. and again believe it or not uh, and you guys will know because i'm sure you could track on you know what stone is popular and how it's selling but i truly believe this burberry gray burberry beige are stones mm-hmm. that um i won't say they're trending but like i'd say they're mm-hmm. timeless so they'll always yeah, be trending that's it yes, yes. Yeah, exactly i don't think yes. they'll ever really go out of style style um, yeah so those stones i think um i think people used to do a lot of satwario and all 5 6 years ago uh, mm. i think that has died down a little i think that mm. was like you said a trend you know yeah. let's use satwario here let's use like um but i still think satwario and kalakata satwario used um sensibly and why i say sensibly because you can understand everyone's budget doesn't exist yes. in what satwario right. cost 5 years ago it's almost three times the same quality what it costs today right so it's it's not affordable by everyone to use that yeah. and so whether it is karara or satwario we'll bring it in but we'll use it in a pattern yeah you know so again yeah. we'll mix it with an armani an armani bronze if it's a kalakata satwario or we'll mix it with um uh, you know if it's a regular satwario you'll mix it in with um a black stone um, or you'll mix it with a beige stone so it, but these are all kind of i believe um and especially this mix that i'm talking about is all something that was like i said used in european palaces and villas um centuries ago yeah, so that's really coming back in a big way i also think it has to do with people watching too much netflix because period dramas are always very in yes and, yes uh, of when, course and anyone making a home tends to look at what's going on what style of furniture yeah, yeah. that's a, that's a quite interesting and i think in homes particularly because people are spending so much time at home now i think people sensibilities are are transforming right they they are looking at uh, look if i have to be home i might as well live well and you know sort of be in a space that i thoroughly enjoy yeah so uh, yeah so 
uh, you know, as an ideology, you also, I mean, why you K2 India provides, uh, you know, design, cutting edge design that is cost effective as well. You know, you, like you said, you do, I mean, every client does not have the same budgets. What are the ways in which one can uh, ensure luxury in a space while pro providing a cost effective sort of solution using stone? The designer. That's where your investment has to be. The designer has to be very inventive and very good and you'll get a great product. Um, you know, I, uh, in my earlier years as a design student, not even a designer, I would say someone who had an interest, I saw uh, my now boss, Mrs. Coley, use very simple stones because, you know, she's very well known for having uh, done a lot of the renovation of Sir Edward, Edward Latin's work in New yeah. Delhi. Yeah. And uh, the British all utilized Indian stones. Um, you know, there were all different sorts of granites, whether it was the green stones, the red stones, Jaisalmer, uh, Makrana, they used all those stones. Um, so I grew up with... Um, uh, using and understanding Indian stones quite well as well. Um, mm -hmm. I still think one of my favorite stones um, to use is Silbine Kota, you know, and I think depending on how you use it, it can be really, uh, it, it can look quite fabulous. Um, but I think now more and more, if you want to be cost effective, you um, because you see, I think using a Jaisalmer or using um, a green granite, it becomes, um, it kind of takes on a different language, right? Because you're bound to yeah. a color in your base. Yeah. So it's, it's either you're really committed to it in a way and you know, you absolutely love it. Um, so there's a tendency not to go in that direction, but definitely uh, there are so many options out today with Indian yeah. stones where you can do some amazing stuff, you know, and Kota being yeah. one of those base stones that you can do amazing stuff. Again, it depends on having a great designer and layering it. You know, you can use mm -hmm. Kota and like a Sir Edward Latians did, you know, you do a lining of white with it, etc. It can come out really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it, like I am very, I'm a very strong believer in you spend where you need to, where it's really yeah. going to make the impact. But yeah. If someone is on a, on a, on a budget, right? unfortunately for, um, for you guys, my suggestion would have been that uh, tone, it, tone down the cost that you spend on the larger spaces because you are going to cover it with carpets and furniture and tables, etc. So at some point, a large proportion of what money you spend is going to be covered by something else that you're also going to have to buy. Um, right. So I think, I mean, to really answer your question, I think it depends... Um, on a very, having a very good designer, to on um, how to utilize, have different budgets for different spaces, right? So then you pick your stone within that budget, depending on how the designer is visualizing the final product of that. Um, and that I think is key on, on how to control budgets, because you know, you know, we can come in with a client with a 50 lakh budget for X square feet and suddenly it suddenly doubles because they love something, which is great for you guys, but at the end, <laughs> Sometimes some of us get really stuck because then the, that budget of accessories has disappeared because it went to the stones. Right? No, I think that's a very valid point. Yeah, and I think the key uh, at the end of the session is yes, to hire a really good designer and sort of let innovation drive everything else. Exactly. Right? Innovation and design is what is key. So uh, that's a wonderful sort of note to end on. Uh, last, I think somebody's already asked a question, which is your favorite Indian stone, and you answered Kota. So thank I you. Uh, I have one more question for you. If you had to pick one stone that would resonate with your personality, uh, what would that be? I, I really don't have to think about this one because it's Burberry beige. I love that stone. So. Okay. <laughs> Great. Uh, and uh, so we are, this series, as you know, is called uh, Let's Talk Design. We're following the hashtag Let's Talk Design. Uh, if you had to say sort of one line on, on Let's Talk Design with stone, what would that be? One line on Let's... Uh, let's Talk Stone. Um, I would, I mean, I'd probably say let's talk 
a stone on vertical surfaces because it's my new obsession to it's i don't new obsession but i'm uh, i'm really kind of pushing the limits of how we can use stone and what stones we can use on vertical surfaces yeah i think that's super useful also given the you know the functionality aspect that you mentioned it makes a lot of sense so i i guess that's a tip for everybody today to go back and re look at how uh, they can design vertical spaces using stone uh, thank you so much kohelika for being a part of the a class journey uh, as a as a class is celebrating 50 years of being in the industry this year uh, they'll be planting a tree on your behalf Uh, oh, as a gesture of gratitude for you to be a Thank part of this. Thank, Thank you so much. It was lovely talking to you. Thanks. Lovely talking to you. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. You too. Take care.